Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free, and just remember what you mean to me. And maybe when you go out, put one finger in the air, call your friends and they will meet you there. Just follow the neon lights Just follow the neon lights Follow the neon
There's nothing left to keep you locked inside The years ahead will be wild It's hard for me to see but now I'll find You're no longer a child Just close your eyes There's nothing left to keep you locked inside The years ahead will be wild It's hard for me to see but now I'll find You're no longer Baby, when you go out, be thankful. Baby. <laughs> Baby, when you go out, Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free, and just remember what you mean to me. And maybe when you go out, put one finger in the air, call your friends and they will meet you there. Just follow the neon line. Follow the neon lights Just follow the neon lights Just follow the ne Just follow the neon lights Just follow the Follow the neon lights Just follow the neon lights Just follow the neon lights
Talking to strangers and laughing till you cry. A few hours there will open up your mind. Walking through back streets in a different part of town. Just be sure you know what is around. I hope you will be alright. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Stay close to the neon lights. Stay close to the knee, stay close to the knee, stay close to the knee on lights. Taking the knee. Taking the knee on night.
just close your eyes. Don't just close your eyes. Don't just. to see but now I'll find you're no longer a child hello guys and welcome back yes it's been a couple of years and but I finally got round to get in or getting started again on neon lights um, the reason why I haven't been able to do this is I practically gave up. Um, not on the song, I didn't give up on the song. I gave up trying to record my screen, record the audio in, in a good format, you know, nice and clear, and record the video, etc, etc. Um, my poor old iMac just, just couldn't seem to cope with it and I couldn't get things like QuickTime recording properly and it was stuttering because I think you have to use the default drive on QuickTime. You can't change what drive it's recording the videos to. So it's using the same drive, even though it's an SSD. It was using the same drive as what my, uh, you know, my, my, my Pro Tools setup uses, um, and it was stuttering all over the place. It was driving me mad. So I'm afraid I gave up on it until yesterday. Um, so yesterday I found uh, a little program called Screen Flick. I think it's called screen flick yes screen flick and I downloaded the trial I did try screen flick flick before um, and I couldn't get that working either I've tried a multi multitude of programs um, but I tried it again I thought I'd give it one last shot and lo and behold I managed to get it working so it's a little jittery um, but for the most part it does work it records my screen in glorious 4k which I couldn't do before so it should be easy to read you know the Pro Tools sessions should be easy to read etc etc um, and I'm able to save the video as it's recording through my um, I don't know what you call it firewire link or whatever to a really fast external hard drive which I've got an 8 terabyte one uh, so it's a little raid setup that I've got so I have managed to get it working so I've been dying to get back to uh, neon lights and as you've probably just seen warts and all I've just recorded in as best as I can at the minute the the lead vocal and some little back in some phrases and things um, not my best vocal by a long shot and if I can get a better vocal down, I'll probably do that offline and you know bounce it onto the the, the um, session for you, so you don't have to watch it all over again. Um, even though it's a long, sort of drawn out process, I thought best to leave it in there, best to include it in the video, just so as you can see my little work workflow that I've got going on, and how easy it is for me to just you know pause, mute, record, record another track, record another track, record another track, and. What I'm hoping to do next is obviously stitching all the audio together, so picking the best bits out of the takes that I did and putting them all together first and then we'll do a little bit of um, mixing, maybe a little bit of tuning on the voice uh, on that vocal, there's going to need, need to be some tuning on there, um, but only on the bits that I'm not happy with, for the most part I'll probably leave it as is and then we'll put a few effects on it and mix it into the track. Okay, so welcome to part two of Neon Lights. Let's dig straight into it. Okay guys, so we've got all the audio into Pro Tools, all the um, the vocals in there. Um, not my best vocal, I freely admit, and it's plainly obvious. Um, I literally had half an hour to bang this in and kids running around and all that stuff. So what I might do is, well, what I definitely will do is record this vocal again when I've got a lot more time and I'll put it in at the end of the video. But the process um, for either that vocal or this vocal is uh, is pretty much the same to me. So this is how I would process uh, a vocal in Pro Tools. <clears throat> so I'm no, I'm no expert at this. I just go by, you know, um, how it sounds. But let's have a look. So what I've done already is 
all the vocals that you just heard me put in, I tried to keep as much as I could from the original vocal, but any bits that I didn't really like, I used the different takes um, and slotted them in up here. So I didn't like this end bit on the first full vocal I did, so I just stole a little bit from the, um, the second and third attempt I had. Um, I would say absolutely that you must put in um, a fantastic dry vocal or as best vocal as you possibly can. Uh, that way you'll have you know, a, a, a better vocal throughout the whole session and you won't have to do much tuning and changing. So if, you, if there are some phrases that you can't get right, my advice would be to just keep trying to sing them uh, and, and get as close to perfect as you can. Um, that said, this vocal wasn't perfect, so I did use a few takes and take take a bit from you know the other takes. But this is what we've got. Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free. Okay, so we've got the vocal in there. I've called it lead vox. So this is the um, the tr channel that I'm going to use for the lead vox going throughout the whole song and if there's any backing vocals to put in there I'll put them on backing vox uh, so keep it all together um, <clears throat> now the first thing I'd normally do is check through the the vocal completely from start to finish uh, if there are any obvious tuning issues that need to be addressed I would do that first with the dry vocal um, I'm not going to do that with this whole vocal uh, I'd be here all day doing that because this is so bad <laughs> Um, but what I can do is show you what I do. So let's take this phrase, for instance. Baby, when you go out. Now, if I wasn't happy with that phrase, um, you know, if there was a, a little bit of a tuning issue there, what I would do, I've only got Waves Tune in Pro Tools, um, but you can do this in, you know, all the other tuning programs. So I would pop in Waves Tune. There we go. And I would just press play and get it to analyze that part of the audio. Baby, when you go out. Okay. So there's the audio analyzed. Baby, when you go out. Let's just back it off a little bit. Um, th I would do that for the whole vocal or, or for that phrase you know, I would cut that one phrase out and just select that and get it to do exactly what it's just done here. So it's only looking at that one phrase. Baby, when you go out. It's not bad, actually, that one. Um, I'd probably leave that. But whatever, whenever I do this, I get it to analyze. I select all. So it selects everything that it's analyzed. And I take it down to zero. So the original dry vocal unmolested, untouched. I would do that for the whole phrase. Baby, when you go out. And let's say it was this bit. I'm not sure if you can hear the tones through Soundflower. But if if that bit was off, which Baby, it is a little. Baby, when you go out. What I would do is just select that part and just dial it in a little bit. Maybe the note transition a bit lower. And then I end up with just that one part of the phrase corrected and it hasn't touched any other part. Um, most of the songs that you hear these days are totally auto-tuned and corrected throughout, start to finish. Uh, I don't do that at all. I literally just pick the part that I want to change and just do Baby, that. Baby, when you go out. And I would do this exact same process throughout the whole track so if there was something that stood out that wasn't uh, quite right and you know sort of spoilt the track a little bit I would go in and dial in that 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 single phrase and look at that you know maybe that one little word or sentence that wasn't quite quite right um, and that's how I do my tuning really <clears throat> once I finish the tuning uh, I'll bounce the tune parts to disk as a WAV file and then I would re-import them so the the lead vox track, I'd re-import them onto the lead vox track and get rid of the um, the old one, you know, mute it out the old the old phrase, the untuned phrase, and I would still keep everything on this single line throughout the whole track. Okay, but I'm not going to use any tuning today. But that's how I would do my tuning. 
So the next thing I would tackle um, would be the the levels, the EQ, that kind of stuff on the vocal, uh, and try and get it to blend into the track um, as as best as possible at this stage. So um, I've done a little bit of work over here on a on a separate track, uh, so you don't have to see me bumbling about with plugins. So the first thing I'd look at is EQ. Baby, when you go out. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, if I just pull over this EQ onto the track. So what you'll see I've done with the EQ is I've rolled off some of the low end, um, which you know you, you don't really hear in a vocal, but I've kept some of it in to, to keep the warmth there. And in my voice, it's quite harsh in places. There are some frequencies that I've extenuated to, to sort of pick them out. So if we look at this level here, if I push that up to the max, Baby, when you go out. You can hear the, the sort of a ringing effect there in that frequency. And I think that's from the um, the surround I used around the mic and, and the mic stand. It's picking up a bit of ringing from that. So I've just dialed that out a little bit. Uh, it's not very audible, but, you know, just dial it out a little bit, make it a cleaner vocal. So take, I don't know, four decibels off that. And also in the, in the mid tier, uh, if I boost that up, Baby, when you go out. It's also quite a harsh little bit there. It's not, not too pronounced, but I would dial that out a little bit more. Uh, only four and a half decibels out. Baby, when you go out. There you go. Uh, and also add a little bit of air, you know, to the end to, to give it some breath and a little bit of life. And that's all I do on the EQ. Um, with regards to DSing, I would look at putting a DSer on. Uh, these are all bug standard plugins that you get with Pro Tools, by the way. And for the DSer, I've just done a male sh DS and dialed in the threshold. Baby, when you go out. So it literally just gets the t at the end. Baby, when you go out. But only it only attenuates it just just a, just just a tad. It just takes the edge off it a little bit. Baby, when you go out. But further on down the track, there's a lot more S's and a lot more T's, and it does, you know, knock about three dBs off off some of them. Uh, so that's that's a good little thing, a little subtle change there on on the vocal. Uh, then we could start adding, you know, reverbs and delays and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, for speed here, um, there's a plugin called JJP Vocals that I've got, which seems to combine most of the the effects together. So if we pop that on there. So what this does is uh, I've just put a, a warm box on, which can be found, you know, in the male vocal section. Um, I've left it as male one. It's got a, a DSer on there as well. So that brings it down a little bit more as well. The S's and the T's. Um, you can change the sensitivities and the space, the attack, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, a lot of effects are on this plugin uh, that seem to suit my voice quite well. So if I play that through. Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free. And just remember what you mean to me. That's quite nice, eh? That's not bad at all. Uh, there's no delay on there, and I do want delay on this vocal. So I've gone for a H delay. Uh, it was sort of a wrap box, but I've, it's not very wet, so it's quite dry. Um, let's have a listen to that. Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free. It's not till you get, till you start doing this in headphones that you can hear like there's too much feedback and it echoes for too long, all that kind of stuff. When you're monitoring normally, you don't pick up a lot of that stuff. Um, and I've got to say, you know, trying to do this in headphones is really confusing. I don't think this is the way you should do it. You should do it on your, your you know, your studio monitors. But um, I have to put my headphones on for this. Otherwise, you hear the speakers, obviously, through the mic. But this is the um, the H delay that I've used. Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free. And just remember what you mean to me. 
Uh, now these plugins have all got, well, most of them have got the analog set in here. Um, but Baby, when you go out. I always find it's adding hiss and, you know, little artifacts and stuff like that that are present in analog recordings, but I don't want them in this recording. Uh, so I always dial them off. I've got it synced up to the host as well, to the tempo here. Okay, so that's the HDLA. So if we listen to that in the track, I've also brought the levels down a little bit uh, on the lead vox, try and mix it in a bit better. So let's have a listen to it with the track. Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free. And just remember what you mean to me And maybe when you go out Put one finger in the air Call your friends and they will meet you there Just follow the neon lights Okay, so uh, that's pretty much the vocals, you know, dialed in a little bit better. Probably could do with a little bit more compression and, and leveling out, but, you know, that, that's not too bad for now. So I'll leave them at that for this session. Right, the next thing I want to tackle is the chorus. So let's get to the chorus. Here we go. Follow the knee. Right, what I want to do is, where he says follow the neon lights, I want to take the neon lights part out of that and repeat it all over the chorus. Um, but I also want to transpose it a whole octave up, okay? Um, I'll show you what, you mean, what I mean in a sec. So what I need to do is, was, this is the reason why I wanted to get a really good take of that at the end of that bar, so... Follow the neon lights. It was really important I got that tape right, and you'll see why now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create, yes I am, what are you doing Dave? I'm going to create a new track, boom, and I'm going to copy that down to it. Let's just mute that out, so I've got that. <clears throat> okay. And what I want to do next is transpose it up. Uh, now, I think this is a stock plugin that comes with Pro Tools. Um, it's just called Sound Shifter. That's the one. And I'm going to put it up a whole octave and make it smooth as I can. Uh, you can't hear that because I haven't put Sound Flower on. Shall I try it again? Okay, so if you're around my age, that's a bit like Pinky and Perky. Um, if you're not, you probably think I'm just a madman. So if we cut this down. Okay, so what we need to do is bounce that out and back in again. So I'm going to bounce that to disk as a WAV file and then pull it back in. And the reason I do that is because this um, sound shifter takes up a hell of a lot of processor power and practically cooks my Mac. So I don't want to leave that effect on there, so I'm going to bounce it out and, and bounce it in again. Right, and the way we do that, we just do bounce to disk. Uh, make sure you got your settings right. I've got it on mono, 48 uh, kilohertz, 24-bit. And then we're going to convert and import after bounce. There we go. And I'm going to call it... I've tried to do this on camera three times now and 
they all went wrong. And the last time I did it, which I got it perfect, I forgot to put the Soundflower output on the channel. So it was all great, apart from you guys wouldn't have heard what the hell it was I was doing. So uh, if I call that repeat five. Boom. And what it'll do is it'll re-import it in a new track down here. So it's not in the right place at the moment. So let's go and find it. There it is. Okay, now what I can do is delete the original out of time one. Actually, let's not do that because I want to get them in time, don't I? So let's turn this plugin off. Actually, let's get rid of it because it's a killer. CPU killer. Follow. Follow the knee. See, it's, it's out. So we just need to slip that. Get it in time. Follow the. Follow the neon lights. Here you go. Sounds great. Follow the knee. We get the fur in. Follow the neon lights. Follow the neon lights. Uh, Follow the neon. I've done it again. There's no flower out. Oh god. Follow the neon lights. So there you go. Perfectly in time. So I can get rid of the original, and I can just keep that one. Um, now I want the neon lights part of that repeating all the way down uh, the chorus so if I just copy that over it doesn't matter where it goes at the moment I want to get this to just say neon lights There you go. Now that's at the end of it, <clears throat> because I'm going to be repeating this, I don't want the, the S at the end. Um, it'll blend into the track anyway, but um, I want to get rid of that. So if I just pull it back to about here. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, see if we can grid it. And what we need to do is get this now in time. So let's pull that back. It's fine. We've got to figure out where this needs to go now. <clears throat> Follow the neon lights. There you go. So then if I copy this down, through the rest of the chorus. You get it? And this is how I envisage the chorus to be. Um, Follow the neon lights. Okay. Um, also, when we get to, there's another part, the second chorus. So the second chorus up here. I hope you will be alright. Be alright, be alright, be alright. I want that to say be alright through that chorus, and then when it changes to that. Stay close to the neon lights. Neon lights, neon lights sort of thing so what I'm gonna do is do the pitch shift in and the repeats all the way through and I'll catch up with you in just a second okay and we're back so I've copied all the repeats for the first chorus through to the end and I've done all the repeats for the second chorus through to the very end and with that little change in the middle there it'll all make sense now um, and there's also this little one here just follow the 
Okay, uh, obviously I don't want to leave them dry like that. So I've got a little JJP vocal on there again, which is just um, a full reset with a little bit of, uh, I've took, you know, took the DS up a little bit so it takes the S's off and it's got a bit of compression on there, all that kind of goodness. So it now sounds like that. And I also wanted a bit of delay on there, so I've put a long delay on, which looks like that. So it now sounds like that. And when you put all that together, just drop it down in volume a little bit. Uh, you get this. Just follow the neon lights. So let's get this. Follow the neon lights. Okay. And then it ends and goes into the second verse. And then at the end of this verse, we go into the second chorus. Part of town. Just be sure you know what is around. I hope you will be all right. Okay, and then this break here. Stay close to the Okay, uh, so that that was my idea for this track. Um, so what I'll do is I'll play it through till we get to the end part, which is around here somewhere. Uh, which is the little bridge. Uh, the little bridge will, <clears throat> it's like nice and mellow, um, but at the end of it, as I said in part one, I want the end to be a full on, trance track um a you know, really angry trance track and i'm going to try and do it you know in the in the style of the 90s i used to do this in the 90s so i'm going to have a crack at doing this as i used to back then uh, but using the you know the latest plugins and stuff uh so this little bridge will take us into the ending and as this part's already quite long i'll do a part three with the ending and then the full track mastered and you won't have to wait two years again for it um, i'm all set up now the imac seems to be performing okay so i'll get straight onto this I'll, I'll do another vocal as well so the vocals a little bit better um but for now if we just listen to this through uh i'll also try and master this a little bit you know get the levels up a little bit and overlay it on top of this so you can hear exactly how I want it to, to, to sound. Okay, so for now, I'm going to play this to the end and then sign off, and uh, I look forward to catching you in, in part three. Okay. Baby, when you go out, be thankful that you're free and just remember you mean to me and maybe when you go out put one finger in the air call your friends and they will meet you there just follow the neon line
strangers and laugh until you cry. A few. Okay, so there we go, guys. Um, I'll see you very soon in part three. Um, if you like these videos, please subscribe to let me know or like to let me know. Comment as much as you like in the, in the bottom there. Um, any advice you've got on the mix, you know, all that kind of stuff. Don't be shy. Uh, we're learning all the time. So uh, that's it for now. I'll see you in part three. Okay, bye.